Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Revving, and uh, you read the title correctly. It's been five years with the Shelby GT350, and for the few of you guys who have been around for the last five years at least, you guys may be just as surprised as I am. You always hear how time flies by, and I actually, for the most part, don't really agree. But in few instances, having this GT350 being one of them, uh, yeah, five years, that, that actually kind of blows my mind. I bought this August of 2017, actually to the date I am filming this, and I might try to upload it the same day, August 9th, maybe I'm close. But uh, yeah, five years with it, and so I figured we're kind of just gonna make an update video. Um, kind of do some housekeeping on just some of the things that is good to know about it, maybe my personal experiences with the car, and then we're gonna end just all poetic, put a camera in the car, maybe just go for a drive. I know I've been slow to upload, and I always say that, but uh, yeah, the next month or two actually looks like it should be pretty full of content. Doing the update on this car right here, and then we're like a week away from a one-year update on the 2014 GT500, and before I even do that, I might just make a video kind of reviewing the exhaust on the GT500. I recently put a uh, Borla Attack catback system on there, and I like it quite a bit as well. So maybe a little teaser real quick. But that being said, uh, within the week, I sh if I'm not lazy, I'll probably get out with the GT500 and make an exhaust video. And then the following week or so, I'll make the one year update on the GT500. And within one year, that's quite the doozy, but I love it right now. That's it for that. Nothing going on with the red truck. Uh, we're about two, maybe three weeks away from the tan truck, Gen 1 mid-travel build uh, being all completed. And of course, once that's done within the month, that's gonna occupy a lot of this channel's content. So, although I've been slow, looks like content's gonna be cranking up pretty soon here. Then we're rolling into October, November pretty soon, and then the Lotus Amira should be here by then, fingers crossed. And then any time in between then, if I get that GT500 2022 I've been talking about, that'd be great, but it's not looking so good. So let's just forget about that and stay positive. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be sweating like a dog. Okay, I love filming in my garage, but right now it is still August in Texas and it's insulated, but not air conditioned. All right. So now that you guys know all about that, let's get into the GT350 five-year update. And yes, of course, I have a cheat sheet just to make sure I don't ramble too much. Let's try to make this pretty brief just because, like I said, it's hot as hell and I'd rather be driving it. So let's do that. So starting off, I think it'll be kind of interesting to mention if you guys haven't been around or if you guys don't remember, when I bought this back in 2017, it was my only vehicle. And so with that said, it was my daily driver. Now I didn't have like long commutes by any means, but uh, whenever I went anywhere, of course I took this, whether it was the gym or wherever. Um, and it's kind of funny looking back on that now because you know, I love it just as much, if not even more, now that I got to know it. But it certainly turned into more of the occasion car that I drive maybe on average three to four times a month. That sounds terrible, I know. But you know what? It's actually kind of nice to just drive it on occasion. Uh, when you drive it every single day, it doesn't get boring, but it just becomes your norm. So now when I daily drive like a 2014 uh, Raptor and I jump into this thing, uh, it's just an occasion. It's a lot of fun. In fact, just last Sunday, I drove it to, uh, if you guys are around the area, you guys would know what I'm talking about. I'm like North, North Austin, Leander area. And so I drove to Marble Falls, uh, Blue Bonnet Cafe with a friend with his 2019 350R. And that was just a hell of a lot of fun, man. So it's an occasion car now, but my first year with it was my daily driver and it actually was a fine daily driver, funny enough. I think within the first year, I did a resonator delete. So the GT350Rs came without a resonator from the factory and I love the way they sounded. I rode in a 350 non-R that had the delete and I knew I had to do it with mine. So I went ahead and did that. Not gonna lie, it wasn't the best way to do it. Um, I trusted someone, not pushing the blame on him, it doesn't matter, it worked out regardless. But we did an X-pipe without the resonators, but it was meant for a Mustang GT. So when I went to a shop to get it installed, they said, what do you want us to do with the current X-pipe? This is a little weird. And I, so in short, they Jimmy rigged it and it totally worked, uh, but it drove me crazy to where I uh, eventually fixed that uh, and did it right. And that was on a recent video, but we'll get to that. So going in order, we did a resonator delete, it worked. Uh, soon after that, um, I should have done it right away, but oh well. Uh, I did paint protection film on the front through a best spoke. Um, and so that was cool. Um, now I just worry a little bit less when I'm driving and there's just crap on the road or I'm following someone. Um, so yeah, paint protection film. Something that was done actually fairly recently here uh, was some uh, oil separators. Again, just for the longevity of the engine. Technically, you really only need the passenger side, but what the hell, the uh, driver's side was in stock. So did two oil separators just for, you know, overall longevity of that engine. Going back to the whole thing with the resonator delete done wrong, kind of driving me crazy. It didn't until it started rattling. So I didn't know if that was gonna be a broken exhaust hanger because I heard that was fairly common. It thankfully wasn't. It was just the clamps that that exhaust shop used were kind of starting to loosen up. So it was kind of making this nasty sound. Um, and so I figured, what the heck, let's just start with the clean slate here. 
I ordered a Ford Performance slash Borla exhaust system. It's not a Borla attack, nothing like that. It's just the Ford Performance catback exhaust without a resonator. It's cool because on the muffler itself, it actually says Ford Performance. So looks just nice and cohesive. Um, so we just ripped off whatever the hell we did, uh, you know, back like four years ago. And, uh, and now it's got a exhaust from Ford Performance Borla and without the resonator. So it's just more cohesive. And I didn't notice a huge, huge difference initially. Uh, now that the muffler's kind of broken in, it's definitely more talkative in a good way. Now, the last video I made with this car was in regard to the Grimspeed exhaust valve simulators. The one thing that drives me crazy with this car, the way it was set up from the factory, is it sounds great with the exhaust valves open, and I'm someone who never closes the exhaust valves, and the exhaust valves always close, um, or are closed when you go to start it up, even if you left it open before. And if you're driving with them open, they always close in sixth gear, which kills your sound of your rev match to fifth. So we, uh, Grim Speed makes some exhaust valve simulators, so we got those installed. That was what the last video was about with this thing. And now that I've gone on that one drive last Sunday, it is just so nice. When I'm in sixth gear, it's not overbearing, it's not too loud, it sounds really good, but the rev match is to fifth. Starting it up and not having to toggle the exhaust valve switch, it's I really like that. Kind of going out of order here, but the last thing I'll say, this isn't really like a customization or a mod, um, just more of an experience thing that I'll kind of tell you guys about. At about 11,500 miles, I swapped the factory Super Sport tires for the Cup 2s. Um, again, this is a 2017, so it came with the Super Sports. I think starting 2019, the 350 non-R started coming with Cup 2. So I wanted to see what that was about, and so I did, and I'm liking the tire quite a bit. All right, now to the more juicy part. Uh, you guys are wondering if I've had any problems, and if so, what were they? My car, specifically, a 2017 that I've been the only owner of and I care for it uh, meticulously. The first thing I've ever had a slight issue with is when it was raining and I wanted to go do some donuts and kind of learn the way the traction management system works. I was trying to do some donuts out in the rain with it, and when I turned traction control all the way off, and um, donuts seem fun for a split second, and then the car kind of shakes kind of violently, and then I get a warning that says uh, service advanced track. And you fix all that by just turning the car off, leaving it off for a couple seconds, turning it back on, and it goes away. But it says to service the advanced track. Uh, I tried to see some other videos of GT350s doing donuts. Some of them don't have the problem, some of them do. By problem, I mean the notice. A little weird, sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't, but you know what, this isn't the car I get my thrills by doing donuts. That would be fun, but there's a 2014 GT500 for that. And the second and last little issue I've had with the car was more of a uh, interior kind of upholstery thing. I don't know when this happened, I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention, it's been there for a while. But on the driver's side, uh, kind of the upholstery kind of popped out on the top, I'll throw a picture here. Um, and I couldn't fix it myself, I tried to put it back in, under the rubber seal and I couldn't, but the dealership took care of it. Um, every dealership's gonna be a little different. The only problem with this dealership is I had to schedule it out like a month in advance, but hey, it's not like I couldn't drive the car because of an upholstery thing, but it's since been fixed, uh, so all good there. Possible issues. Now, of course, you guys who are possibly interested in a GT350, I made a buyer's guide that's gonna go into more detail than this video will. This one's gonna be more of like a quick list and then more poetry driving and talking about why I still like it. Uh, pretty soon here but i made a dedicated like 20 25 minute buyer's guide where every second of that video is hopefully good information for someone in the market uh, but regardless um i'll repeat myself just real quickly a lot of people are always going to ask about uh, oil consumption issues in short zero oil consumption issues with mine particularly i will say uh, when i drive it i drive it fairly spiritedly but it's just not a high mileage car and me personally i get it serviced uh, oil change oil filter change all that kind of stuff and just overall checked up twice a year. Um, even if it's not hitting the mileage marker, um, I will just get it done every six or so months. Uh, so it's always got fresh oil. It's always topped off. I'm checking the uh, oil levels. If you're someone who's going to drive it hard on track frequently, uh, you're just going to want to top off the oil and uh, check it uh, uh, very often. Otherwise, you might be one of those cars that fall victim. That can be any car, but of course, a flat plane crank that revs this high, this displacement, you know, you just want to be on top of it. But no, in short, no issues. Um, I could go on a spirited drive, check the oil, and uh, I'm not having any consumption issues, so that's good. Again, if it matters to you guys, this is a 2017. My first ever oil change with it back five years ago uh, was, I think, just about or maybe just under $100, which today doesn't seem too bad. I remember at the time, people thought it was expensive. Oil and just oil filter, about 100 bucks. Well, any 350 or 350R owner will take that price now for sure. I just got this thing serviced last week. Um, 
and it was about $215 for just an oil change and filter. All right, guys, honestly, that's it for my cheat sheet here. Um, that's about it. Five years with it, um, no big surprises, um, and that's about it. Uh, of course, I could tell you how much I like it from here, but why don't we just go for a drive? I'll dry off my sweat first and just have some fun with it. All right, hopefully this quality works for you guys. I'm gonna keep it nice and easy and just film on my phone, as you guys can see here. But uh, again, done this before, but the car was kind of warm. But let's do another start up here without having to toggle the switches. Very nice. Uh, just stays open, as you guys can tell. Um, even with that, though, I'll still go into track mode just because the throttle response is a little bit better. So it should be easier to kind of build revs when rev matching. So we'll do that track mode, but then we'll go into sport suspension call that good all right so again just gonna film on my phone just to keep it easy so it kind of means i have to drive with one hand but nonetheless we got the seats folded down so uh being immature here hopefully we should be able to hear it pretty well Five years with it i'm not exaggerating every single time i've parked it i have to look back at it that's not a joke i don't think i've done that once and not just look back at it the blue this is a like i said a 2017 so it's a lightning blue i still find a new shade of the blue every single time i look at it uh depends on the lighting i don't know it sounds like i'm making it up but yeah i've never gotten used to this lightning blue it's just always changing its shade the white stripes on this blue i just love it so much uh the soundtrack is just amazing i just am not getting tired of the car a small part of it uh might be a little sentimental in the fact that i bought it new when i was 19 years old and at the time it was a financially pretty irresponsible thing to do but looking back it all worked out but i spent every last dollar i had i was saving up for a house funny enough and then i got a little bit of uh anxiety from home ownership and i just ended up saying you know what screw it i'm just gonna buy a car instead and yeah, so maybe you guys didn't know the backstory on that, so it's kind of stupid uh, financially, but like I said, looking back now, I got a house since then, so it's all good. And I just think it's a cool story to tell uh, now already, but especially when I'm older, you know, if I, uh, you know, it's been five years with the car, but once it becomes 10, 15, 20, 25 years, you know, the car is still special today, but you know, I think it's gonna be a classic uh, before too long. And when I'm old and gray, looking back, I'll be able to say that I was the first and at the time only owner. So that's why I don't think I'll ever sell this particular car. I really get sentimental with material things, but yeah, this one's one that's gonna stick with me for a while. I think it's that particular chassis number that uh, in this VIN that I wanna stick with. Just like I said, cause I was the first owner. And so I think it's gonna be a classic car. Uh, highly sought after maybe maybe not i don't know but all i know is the car hasn't changed form i liked it when i bought it i like it five years later this car is not exactly meant to be the fastest car at anything it still remains today to be the most powerful naturally aspirated engine ford's ever thrown into a car that's pretty cool you know of course the uh, ford gt or the new gt500 got more power but those are either twin turbocharged or uh, supercharged no cheats naturally aspirated this is still the most powerful uh naturally aspirated engine will it stay like that i don't know uh seems like the it seems like it will but if not that means ford's still making cool stuff so it's all good Thing I need to sell you guys on why I like naturally aspirated more than just right then. I'll shift early here to kind of tell you guys that if you're driving this thing nine tenths or ten tenths, it's fun, but you really don't need to. You could shift early, you don't need to bring it to 8,250 RPM. Just going on a nice cruise like this, especially now that the valves are open in six, it's such a good soundtrack. So, what I was saying though is it's not about how fast it is, all about the experience. The transmission's amazing, the soundtrack's amazing. Uh, the steering feels great. Everything, uh, just a lot of rubber on the road, 295 and 305s on this or 305 and 315s on an R. It just connects so well. It doesn't feel like the traditional Mustangs. It's more of a sports car. When I bought this, I was and still am a huge Porsche fan. GT3, 3RSs, GT2s, uh, 2RSs, all of that. And this to me was like the poor man's GT3 
uh, but the American version, because it's front engine V8, but it just kind of, I don't know, had the demeanor of that kind of involvement. And so I acted on it, you know, 60 grand versus, you know, whatever GT3 was going for at the time. Um, seemed like a bargain. And looking back now, I think it was, especially considering that if I had to get rid of this car for one reason or another, I would really struggle trying to find something that would do what this car does. I think I'm really gonna have to spend three, four times the money. So that's why this one's staying around with me. see if I could do a turn signal ref match one hand all right we're getting pretty good at this all right unless something goes bad I really don't know what a uh, six-year update will give you <laughs> beyond this but Hopefully you guys enjoyed nonetheless, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Like I said, a video on the GT500 exhaust and a one-year update on that. A little bit more drama with that one, unfortunately. And then the Tan Raptor will be back soon. Lotus content soon after. Hopefully 2022 GT500 content too, but anywho. That does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.